Early Supporters of Pole Shift Hypothesis An early mention of a shifting of the Earth's axis can be found in an 1872 article entitled Chronology Historique des Mexicains by Charles Etienne Brasser de Bourbourg, a specialist in Mesoamerican codices who interpreted ancient Mexican myths as evidence for four periods of global cataclysms that had begun around 10,500 BCE. In 1948, Huachin Claus Brown an electrical engineer, advanced a hypothesis of catastrophic pole shift. Brown also argued that accumulation of ice at the poles caused recurring tipping of the axis, identifying cycles of approximately seven millennia. In his controversial 1950 work Worlds in Collision, Emanuel Velikovsky postulated that the planet Venus emerged from Jupiter as a comet. During two proposed near approaches in about 1450 BCE, he suggested that the direction of the Earth's rotation was changed radically, then reverted to its original direction on the next pass. This disruption supposedly caused earthquakes, tsunamis, and the parting of the Red Sea. Further, he said near misses by Mars between 776 and 687 BCE also caused the Earth's axis to change back and forth by 10 degrees. Velikovsky cited historical records in support of his work although his studies were generally ridiculed by the scientific community. Charles Hapgood is now perhaps the best-remembered early proponent. In his books The Earth's Shifting Crust, 1958, which includes a foreword by Albert Einstein, and Path of the Pole, 1970, Hapgood, building on Edimer's much earlier model, speculated that the ice mass at one or both poles overaccumulates and destabilizes the Earth's rotational balance causing slippage of all or much of Earth's outer crust around the Earth's core, which retains its axial orientation. Based on his own research, Hapgood argued that each shift took approximately 5,000 years, followed by 20,000 to 30,000 year periods with no polar movements. Also, in his calculations, the area of movement never covered more than 40 degrees. Hapgood's examples of recent locations for the North Pole include Hudson Bay, 60N, 73W, the Atlantic Ocean between Iceland and Norway, 72N, 10E, and Yukon, 63N, 135W. However, in his subsequent work The Path of the Pole, Hapgood conceded Einstein's point that the weight of the polar ice would be insufficient to bring about a polar shift. Instead, Hapgood argued that the forces that cause the shifts in the crust must be located below the surface. Hapgood wrote to a Canadian librarian, Rand Flemath, encouraging him in his pursuit of scientific evidence to back Hapgood's claims and in his expansion of the hypothesis. Flemath published the results of this work in 1995 in When the Sky Fell co-written with his wife. In 1974 Flavio Barbiero, an engineer and explorer, theorized that shifting of the Earth's axis took place 11,000 years ago and caused what was subsequently recorded in myth as the destruction of Atlantis and Mu. He suggested that shifting was probably caused by the impact of a comet on the Earth's surface and that the current position of Atlantis has to be sought under the Antarctic ice sheet. Recent research on pole shift hypothesis The field has attracted a number of authors offering a variety of evidence. In the 1970s and 1980s a series of books not intended as fiction by former Washington newspaper reporter Ruth Schick Montgomery elaborates on Edgar Case readings. In 1997 Richard W. Noen published May 5, 2000, Ice, The Ultimate Disaster. This book argued that a cataclysmic shift of the Earth's ice cap covering Antarctica caused by a planetary alignment and solar storms, would lead to crustal displacement on May 5, 2000. In 1998 retired civil engineer James G. Bowles proposed in Atlantis Rising magazine a mechanism by which a polar shift could occur. He named this rotational bending, or the Arby effect. He hypothesized that combined gravitational effects of the Sun and the Moon pulled at the Earth's crust at an oblique angle. This force steadily wore away at the underpinnings that linked the crust to the inner mantle. This generates a plastic zone that allows the crust to rotate with respect to the lower layers. Centrifugal forces would act on the massive ice at the poles, causing them to move to the equator. Books on this subject have been published by William Hutton, 
including the 1996 book Coming Earth Changes, Causes and Consequences of the Approaching Pole Shift, which compared geologic records with the psychic readings of Edgar Case and predicted catastrophic climate changes before the end of 2001. In 2004 Hutton and co-author Jonathan Eagle published Earth's Catastrophic Past and Future, a scientific analysis of information channeled by Edgar Case, which summarizes possible mechanisms and the timing of a future pole shift. Scientific Research on Pole Shift Hypothesis While there are reputable studies showing that true polar wander has occurred at various times in the past, the rates are much smaller, one degree per million years or slower then predicted by the pole shift hypothesis, up to one degree per thousand years. Analysis of the evidence does not lend credence to Hapgood's hypothesized rapid displacement of layers of the Earth. Data indicate that the geographical poles have not deviated by more than about 5 degrees over the last 130 million years, contradicting the hypothesis of a cataclysmic polar wander event. More rapid past possible occurrences of true polar wander have been measured, from 790 to 810 million years ago, true polar wander of approximately 55 degrees may have occurred twice. There is no known physical evidence of more rapid shifts occurring at any point during Earth's history.